Hey everybody, my name is Lucas and welcome to this video where I'll be walking through Todoist and see how suitable it is for the getting things done productivity method or GTD for short. So I'm already logged into my account here and we are presented first with an inbox. Pretty straightforward, pretty common for any tool out there and very useful to have. So anything I want to capture, I can just add it here and it is done. It will be a task initially. That is the main kind of uh, way to categorize separate items in this software. It is really designed to be a, a task manager more than anything. That has some advantages, but it also has a couple of shortcomings and we'll go through those as we walk through the tool. So that is the inbox. Uh, there is also some calendar related categories that will actually skip. I tend to not really work from my calendar too much unless it really has to be there. Uh, uh, I tend to work more from contexts, which is also what GTD is designed for. So that's what we'll be looking at as well. First up though, the first category we're presented with here is projects. So when we open up this taxonomy, what I've kind of created here is a couple of ways you can use this uh, feature because you can't remove the feature or, or rename it or anything uh, in, in multiple ways. The first one is very straightforward and, lit and, and take it very literal, so to speak. So what you actually could do here is add projects under the projects category. Like say if I want to buy a new car, then I can create that project. I can split it up into several phases by uh, using the board view, which is pretty nice. Uh, it can uh, allow me to kind of... Uh, categorize tasks sequentially, which is pretty cool. I can also go for a more classic list view, in which case the phases I define are still there, but not uh, visually. So in this case, I'm using the board feature. Looking at this project overview, you can tell that these are all tasks. I can complete them if I want. And uh, there are also labels associated with these tasks, which we'll go over in a couple of minutes to kind of see the logic behind those. How are they related to GTD specifically? Uh, so that is the most kind of straightforward way to work with the projects feature. You could also, however, uh, go one level higher and kind of take your goals that you've defined and bundle projects under specific goals. So that way you incorporate that higher level view within this software. Because again, it doesn't, it's not really very suitable for every level, uh, uh, like every horizon of focus, but this is a way you could do it, define the goal and group any projects related to that goal under it. So again, you don't have to do this and this, it's usually, you know, you'll probably want to make a choice on one of these. What you'll probably want to add here regardless, uh, and this is where the naming conventions kind of get confusing because this is not a project, but you want to add your tickler file. So anything you want to be reminded of, you can just add it as a list here to review when you will get reminded. That's pretty easy to do. They made this uh, very straightforward. Remind me about this tomorrow and it will automatically remind you tomorrow. You don't even have to do anything extra. Of course you can, if you want to make it more time specific. So that's a tickler file. And the same goes for the someday maybe list, which is grouped under projects as well. And anything you might want to do, you might want to process later on and define it more specifically. You just all group it in here. Checklists also have their place here in the way I've designed it here. So I just put the weekly review here. Obviously, this is not the complete review, but you can create your template for how you do your weekly reviews and actually save them as templates, which is very handy. You can export it here so that anytime uh, you uh, do your weekly review again, you can just import the template again and then tick off the checkboxes, which is very satisfying, very nice to do. So this is my weekly review complete, so to speak. So that is how you can actually use the projects module here. Uh, again, you can take it very literally or be a bit more creative, which is what I recommend and treat these as lists, uh, 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 specifically, uh, mostly related to non actionable lists. And what I mean with that is what we'll actually see when we move to the labels module. So this is where we define any specific tasks, so actionable items themselves, uh, as for what they are and what they mean. 
for example, if I am the one that needs to do the task and it is one of my next actions, you can define it as such with a label, which we've created here. If, however, somebody else has to perform the action, you can also label it as such by grouping it under the waiting for uh, a label. Now, the reason I didn't opt for a separate waiting for list here is that usually you'll work on projects that involve actions you perform, but also others perform as well. And you want to bundle those in there together because all of those actions together create the full picture of a project and uh, kind of show you during your weekly review or anything uh, where you are at currently with that project, how it's progressing. And to look at an example of that, we can actually take this uh, dummy project here where, uh, as you can see, the defined outcome is to buy a new car. Obviously not as detailed as it should be when applied to any, you know, to your situation, but we just uh, keep it simple for illustration purposes. For phase one, we might want to research our best options for the car, the type of car we want. We might want to call our friend Bob because he is uh, a uh, petrol head and he knows everything about cars. And he might have some great recommendations. I'm also in the process of fixing up my current car uh, so that I can trade it in for a higher value. Uh, it's currently at the garage and I'm waiting for them to alert me when I can pick it up. Now, this is an exact uh, example of a waiting for item and thus it is labeled as such as you can see here. For an next actions though, so in phase one, we define everything in here currently as next action because that is the phase we're currently in. This is how you can kind of hack Todoist to become a sequential uh, task manager, which it really isn't, but uh, uh, this way you can kind of map it to be so. When I go to the task, you can add a label uh, under the add labels uh, point here, and you can add a next action label you can add the context, which is what I uh, have defined as such. I use this symbol to group any uh, context. That makes it easy to find. If I type it, you might, you might have 10 or 20 contexts, who knows? Just type this and you'll see every context you've defined and you can easily add it to the task, as well as the time needed, uh, which is easily uh, searchable by using this symbol in my case. So that's up to you how you define that. It's already linked to a project and a face of that project, so we don't have to do anything there. But if you are going from your inbox, for example, this is also where you can uh, assign the task on a project level. So pretty straightforward so far. You can see also, however, that there are uh, actions after phase one that I've already kind of predefined, even including their context. But you can see that they do not have their next action. Now, how do we actually see all of our next actions. Well, that's something we can do by just clicking on the label itself. But that's still not the end all because what we want to do is actually work from contexts. However, if we click the context here, we also see items that are not next actions. So how do we get around that problem? That's actually where filters come into play. Filters kind of allow you to multi-select several labels or other taxonomies that Todoist offers, which I don't really use, to be honest. I don't think all of them really match up with GCD. But say the online research context, uh, sorry, filter, I should say here, this is just a, a grouped search for any uh, task that has both the next action label and the online research label. This is how I recommend, where I recommend you work from as a gtd -er. Set up these filters, base them on the next action, the condition that it has a next action label and a certain context, and then work from those contexts. You can make it even more uh, refined if you wish. You can add, you know, time needed as well. You can create any sort of filter, which is quite a useful feature in Todoist to go through any next action. Uh, and so this is how you can really work on the more ground levels, but it is definitely not a complete system. I mean. It's not great to use as a reference uh, cabinet or anything like that. This is mostly a task manager, but by really using these filters based on labels, which you do want to hide, honestly, because you can't really, yeah, you can move them around, but still it's going to be kind of a mess. You can see it already. It's pretty buggy here. Uh, and in the end, you really want to work 
uh, from next actions bundled with a certain context. Where you define that, that is from these overviews. When you define that, that's up to you, at least once a week, of course, during your weekly review. Uh, but the system does allow you to do that pretty well. So overall, a pretty good system for GTD. Uh, last uh, portion to show here is to you know, actually process something from the inbox. So let's say I want to uh, add something as a phase two item to that uh, car uh, project call dealership, for example. I can actually assign the label here. I just press the symbol and here it is, calls, there we go. But again, it's phase two and we're still in phase one so far. So what we do is just uh, map it to the phase two of the buy a new car project without adding a next action thus far. However, imagine we have completed them all Usually you'll complete these from their respective lists, of course, but that's where you can add the next action labels because now you've entered the new phase and now these items have become relevant as next actions. So now when I go to the uh, online research label, I can see this item is now on my next actions list. So that is it. Good luck with setting up your system for GTD in Todoist. And if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments.